Okay, so here we're going to look at resistivity um, and what it is and how we measure it. So resistivity is related to the concept of resistance. So if you recall, resistance is the uh, resistance to the flow of electrical current that something might have. So if we have an electrical circuit where we've got a battery and we connect this up to a resistor, then a certain amount of current will flow. So we can measure the current and we can know what voltage we're applying and then using Ohm's law, we can get the resistance. So this is really just the ratio of how hard we're pushing the electrical current, so the voltage we're applying, divided by how much flow rate of current we get. And again, it's really nice to think of the analogy of a water circuit. So if we imagine um, we have some kind of pump that's pumping water around a circuit. So instead of wires, these are water pipes. And then our resistor is just going to be a constriction in the flow. So in this case, uh, we've got some pressure that's being added. So this pump is going to add some pressure. So we've got some pressure P and then we've got some um, flow rate. Uh, let's call that F. And then as we constrict this flow more and more, this flow rate is going to drop down. So we can imagine the voltage we apply being analogous to the pressure that we're adding to one side of this circuit and the current being the flow rate of water. So this can apply to anything. This, this resistor that we've got in the circuit, this could be anything, a device, anything that's resisting the flow of electrical current. But resistivity really relates to materials. So we'll have a look why that is. So here we've got a multimeter. So this can measure resistance. And if we want to measure the resistance of a material, well, one of the few things you can find around the house that you can measure with a multimeter is uh, Play-Doh. So uh, this is just very salty flour and water. Um, so things like things like paper, like paper, its resistance is too high to measure. Things like uh, metal, the resistance is often too low to measure on this. But uh, the Play-Doh actually fits nicely right in the middle of the resistance range of these multimeters. So what I'm going to show here is that the shape of the material affects the resistance. So if we wanted to compare different materials, um, the shape is important. So you can see here, and I've rolled this out nice and long, we get a resistance of about 140 kilo ohms. If I take this same material, same amount of material, scrunch it up. So that's the same material. And now if we measure the resistance, so now we're getting about 50 kilo ohms. So we get quite different resistances all depending on the shape. So how, how do I define the characteristic resistance of this? material. Well, what we're going to do is gonna, we're going to imagine that we make a cube of material. 
So if we have the same size cube, same size imaginary cube, this is a real cube, but I've got the same size imaginary cube of any material we want to compare, then we can measure the resistance of that. So let's say we've got our cube. And let's imagine we connect this up to a circuit. So again, we've got our battery. Connect this up to a circuit. We can put an ammeter in here so we can measure the current flow. So if we do that, then as long as we know the voltage we're applying in this circuit, then we can measure the resistance of this cube. One thing we're going to imagine is that um, this contact here, its resistance is negligible compared to the resistance of this cube. Because otherwise we get something called spreading. So if this wire was coming in and making a point contact with this cube, the current would have to spread out and we'd get this, this spreading effect which would affect the resistance of this cube. So we're going to imagine that the resistance of this contact here, we've got a flat contact, and that's negligible compared to whatever this cube is, and, and the same on the other side. So <coughs> we can choose any size for this cube, but, but typically we're going to imagine that this is a one centimetre cube. So these sides of the cube are one centimetre. Now, let's imagine making this longer. So if we take our cube, and now just double its length. So it's the same material, but we've just made it twice as long. So how does this then affect the resistance we measure here? So if we come back to our water analogy, this is some restriction in the flow of current. And we've just made that restriction twice as long. So there's, there's now twice as much stuff restricting the flow of current. So by doubling the length, we're going to double the resistance. So the resistance we measure here should be double what we have here. Now what happens if we then stack these cubes side by side? So now take our cubes and stack them side by side. So now we've got current trying to flow in this direction, but now compared to just a single cube, we've got um, twice as much um, area to flow through. So again, coming back to our water analogy, this you can imagine is, is just like opening up this restriction. So by having twice this surface area, we've halved the amount of restriction to the flow of current. So by having the cubes arranged like this side by side, that should half our resistance. So <coughs> if we say this imaginary cube that's uh, in this case one centimetre in dimension, then we're going to say the resistance that we measure of that, we're going to call that resistivity, which is this material specific parameter. So it doesn't depend on the shape of the material. So we're going to call the resistance that we measure here, this special resistance, we'll call that rho resistivity. So if we already know the resistivity, so if we've measured 
our cube and we've got some arbitrary shape, then the resistance that we would measure would be the resistance of our one centimeter cube multiplied by the length divided by the cross-sectional area. Then we can also rearrange this. So we can say, okay, what if we want to know the resistivity or something? Then that would be the resistance that we measure multiplied by the area divided by the length. So because we've taken this concept of resistivity from um, a cube, this equation applies only to when we have something that's got a cross, constant cross-sectional area. So it doesn't matter what shape the cross-section is, As long as it's constant, then this equation will apply. All we need to know is the resistance of this, the cross-sectional area and the length, and that will give us the resistivity. So we don't need to actually measure our cube. We can have any arbitrary shape as long as it has a constant cross-sectional area, and we can then get our resistivity of our material. And this is material specific. So each material at a particular temperature will have a resistivity. So what about the units? So units are important. So we can do a unit analysis of resistivity. So if we take our equation for resistivity and plug in the units, so resistance, you know, comes in ohms, area, so we're going to use centimetres, you can use metres, but it's usual to use centimetres, so that's centimetres squared, divided by centimetres, so that means resistivity has units of ohm centimetres. <coughs> 